you guys think when that happens in Christian movies, like Jesus tattles to his dad, like he knocks on his study? <laughs> Your demons aren't going in my name again. <laughs> Either making me look like a fucking idiot. <laughs> my hands hurt for like six hours, Dad. Plus, I'm you. And a ghost. So, that religion's so stupid. <laughs> God awful movie 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 Hello and welcome to God Awful Movies live from all it's cracked up to be Hollywood, California. <laughs> So awesome. All right, and this is, of course, the podcast where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because there is a non-zero chance that after November, all of our lives are going to depend on our ability to feign evangelical Christianity. A familiarity with Kirk Cameron's filmography could save your fucking life. Of course, I am your host, No Illusions, and joining me from stage right... Please welcome my good friend, Heath Enright. <laughs> and of course, also joining us. <sighs> this can't go well. Please don't be dressed as Kobe Bryant. Please don't be dressed as Kobe Bryant. <laughs> Please welcome my bad friend, Eli Bosnick. <laughs> All right. Eli, for the, for the folks listening at home, how would you describe the outfit? California. <laughs> I don't think, I don't think that's California, too. It's, it's what if not I lit Kobe it on, Bryant, so. What if I lit it on fire? Okay, all right, yeah, well, that would do it. That would be Eli, did you also bring real clothes? Yeah. Could you put them on, please? I, I have to share something. Okay. Next door in the other theater is a 50th anniversary production of The Bluest Eye. The bullets are winning book by Toni Morrison. And for a moment in the bathroom line, me and several, I assume, very proud African Americans were like... <laughs> All right. You see why he drinks the scotch, right? You see? Oh, my God. You, could, you, you can just imagine what it's like backstage with these guys, or you can log on to Facebook and see the video that I posted earlier. So, I didn't find Eli's penis. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you think that means, that's what happened. There's yeah, no, and there's video of it on Facebook, yeah. too. All right, so while he's, uh, while he's getting dressed, Heath, tell us, what will we be breaking down today? All right, we watched The Crossroads of Hunter Wilde. It's the story of a prepper compound in Texas during the end times. Maybe? Was it during the end times? Sure. sure. Maybe the end times. And they used their Christianity to survive attacks by Islamic militants mm -hmm. yeah. in Texas. Mm -hmm. And a demon. Yep. Who, of course, is a, a demon of color. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yep. So let yep. me try this one more time. I'm going to make it a little more simple. We watched Republican Wet Dream, the movie. <laughs> <laughs> we did. We totally did. We watched Republican Wet Dream, the movie by Michael Norris. That is the son of Chuck Norris. And, and we get... A sad window into being the son of Chuck Norris. Oh, 
It's pretty fun. It's bad. All right, and Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved Amerigetton, but it was too action-packed and fact-based, you will love this movie. Alex Jones literally watched this movie, thought to himself, I can do better, and was right. What I love about this movie is that it was all the apocalypses at once, mm -hmm. right? It was like they all sat down and they were like, okay, obviously this is what kind of apocalypse are we going to go? And they went and they all said four different fucking things and then they never agreed on it all the way through the writing of the script. Somebody's going, but what about the zombies, right? Fuck, man, we told Frank there would be zombies too. I feel like someone was just fucking with Mike Norris. Like he was at a bar on his third apple teeny and he was like, that's why you need the salt pills, man. And a me somewhere in the middle of Texas was like, but what would you do about zombies? And he's like, good question, great question. <laughs> this is a fucking movie script right here. Please let me blow you. <laughs> it's a beautiful song. <laughs> All right, so... Um... <laughs> Please let me blow you. I was really hoping you would... Yeah. Right. Jock Jammin, absolutely. You got mercy. There's a reprise at the end. You'll love it. All right, so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I I'm going to go with best worst... Actor name? Oh, yes. Yes. So, oh, yes. We could yeah. do the entire episode on this gentleman. <laughs> Jordan Dragon King is an, is an actor in this movie. That's Dragon King. One word. <laughs> yes. Internal caps. Yes, yes. The, the Capital K. K. Dragon Kings came over on the Mayflower. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. No, the Amistad, actually, but yeah. They didn't have a choice. <laughs> boo, boo. The bluest eye audience pisses in my butt. <laughs> What'd you fucking say? No. <laughs> I'm so get, sorry. If we don't get side tackled by somebody from this, this next theater, I'm going to be disappointed. <laughs> we'll deserve it. The it's ghost rest presents the invisibility. I read it. <laughs> Right. And by the way, one other detail on... Oh, only one? On Jordan, Oh, I Dragon want so King. many more than just one? It, it's, it's a list, so... Oh, okay, good. It's a list. According to, to his personal bio on IMDb, Jordan Dragon King, I wrote this down, exactly, is a king, capitalized, also capitalized is the rest of the list, this list. <laughs> king, solepreneur... It's not even spelled right. It's spelled <laughs> soulpreneur, not preneur. Like, it's fine. Artist, again capitalized, and world citizen. I, I read this before I started watching this movie, and I was like, yeah, great. I quit the movie. I'm not yeah. going <laughs> I, I, too, well, I, I, I did the yeah, exact, exact opposite. I was so goddamn in once I got through with the IMDb page. So I was going to go, I'm not getting to the movie itself either. I was going to go with best worst character list on IMDb. All right, I shit you not, these are the characters in order. I'm going to set aside the fact that one of these characters is played by Jordan Dragon King for a second. Just give you the characters themselves. Randy, so far so good. Mutant. That's two. Who is that? I, I saw the movie. That's, it's, it's, one of the, it's one of the zombies. So Randy, Mutant. Tortured Soul, Dagon, Pastor Paul. Obviously. I love this one. Demon Slash Crew. Rough. It's always rough. Not the kind of slashy you want to be. <laughs> Demon Grip. Yeah. <laughs> Claire and Ball. <laughs> so. I was going to give this one best worst plot strand because through the beautiful smoothie that is Mike Norris's brain. <laughs> we will start about 67 apocalypse movies yes. and then wander away from them like grandma <laughs> falling into the pool at the retirement home. It's really a <laughs> sploosh. It's how she wanted to go. Don't be sad. That's the Jewish version of a Viking funeral. <laughs> All right. 
Well, as my IMDb list has already demonstrated on the other side of this break, we have mutants, tortured souls, demons, Bell, and Mike fucking Norris. So we're going to keep the break brief, and we'll be back soon with all the convoluted navel-gazing that is The Crossroads of Hunter Wilde. Hi, welcome to Grocery Store Meat Buying Experience, where in a case all day under hot lights is the best idea we still have. Uh, how can I poison you today? Um, yeah, okay. Uh, I was looking for high quality meat, you know, like grass fed beef, free range chicken, that kind of thing. Do you guys sell that? Nope. Uh, no, but you know what we do have? We have uh, FR33 range chicken, if you're interested. Um, FR33? If you squint, kind of looks like it says free. Um. See? Okay. No, well, yeah, no, I, I get it. Um, but I, I was kind of looking for the real thing, like real chicken, oh. the, the animal. Yeah, no, in, in that case, you want Butcher Box. Oh, what's Butcher Box? Well, Butcher Box believes everyone deserves high quality meat. Every month, Butcher Box ships a curated selection of high quality meat right to your home. All meat is free of antibiotics and added hormones, and each box has 9 to 11 pounds of meat, enough for 24 individual meals. Okay, but is it fresh? Heck yeah, it is. Butcher Box is packed fresh and shipped frozen and vacuum sealed, so it stays that way. And which meats do I get? Well, you can customize your box or go with one of theirs. Either way, you get exactly what you want. And what about here? What do you guys have? Well, uh, here you could have the gray one or the other gray one. Other gray one? Okay. Yeah, that does not sound great. Well, how does ground beef for life sound? I, I mean, that sounds pretty amazing. Well, right now, Butcher Box is offering new members ground beef for life. That's two pounds of ground beef in every box for the life of their subscription, plus $20 off their first box. So you're saying if I sign up for Butcher Box right now, I get two pounds of ground beef for free for as long as I subscribe? That's right. That is a lot of free meat. It sure is. Just go to butcherbox.com slash awful or enter promo code awful at checkout. That's butcherbox.com slash awful or enter promo code awful at checkout. All right. I'm going right now. Cool. Uh, me and the meat will be right here. Okay. We'll be here. Got it. Yep. Gray. Okay, everyone. Welcome to the first writer's room meeting for the Crossroads of Hunter Wild. Yeah, hooray! We uh, okay. So why don't we go around and introduce ourselves? All right, I'll go first. Um, I'm Mike Norris. My body is a weapon, and I am literally so far in my father's shadow that the entertainment company I own with my wife is literally called Second Fiddle Entertainment. Wow. Yeah. Hi. I'm Jordan Dragon King. No. Hi, Jordan. As you can literally read in my IMDb bio, I am a king, soulpreneur, what? artist, world citizen. Mm. And in 2012, me and my family decided to end our relationship with our slave names in order to legally and spiritually establish the Dragon King family legacy. Our family philosophy is rooted in the mantra of following your heart with sovereignty. Okay. Mm. Okay. Uh, I'm Tim. Uh, I work with Patterson Films. I have two cats. Two cats? What a weirdo. Yeah, for real. Get a pet cobra. Yeah, or a human. Oh, okay. Are you gonna? <laughs> <laughs> and we're back! All right, so we're going to open this movie up with Isaiah 24, 1, which I'm going to paraphrase here. God is going to fuck everything six kinds of up. <laughs> right? That's, that's really Isaiah at, as a whole, too. Yeah. And we're also going to get, is this the, the voiceover of Mike mm -hmm. Norris? Yes. Uh-huh. Okay, I wrote this one down, too. I had fun with this. He says, I can't believe that a cabal <laughs> of liberal terrorists... And I was like, yep, quit the movie again. Cool. <laughs> so, yeah, so we're five words in before we get cabal of liberal terrorists. Cabal? Literally five words into this movie before that comes up. Yep. Cabal of liberal terrorists could fall for the lies spewed by. And at this point, I'm like, all right, how's he going to avoid the anti-Semitic slur? Right now? <laughs> <laughs> how does he get out of this? He continues, the lies spewed by an elite mainstream media 
Jews. Damn it! The Jewish papers. Cut. <laughs> was that a long enough pause? Did we get that one? It was a long enough pause, everybody! Let's go to Papa legal. John's! <laughs> <laughs> Please let me suck you ding. So... So, it, while we're getting this whole voiceover about the goddamn liberals starting a civil war, we're cutting between riot footage and footage of Mike Norris wandering around a paintball course. <laughs> <laughs> That's his prepper compound. It is a painful. Course. Yeah, it is. It's amazing. 100%. It's fucking amazing. We're a minute and 26 seconds into the movie before they start reusing the same footage in their montage. Yep. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the footage of him in the deer stand. Right? Oh, his sad. He has like a sniper rifle, but it's just the scope of his sniper rifle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. So he can see the. His tad took the rifle back. Zombies. My greatest <laughs> regret in life is not getting to say nice treehouse to Mike Norris as he was shooting this movie. So he could like loudly yell at me that it's called a survival hut or whatever. <laughs> fall down with an aneurysm anti-semitic slur i could have ended mike norris right then and there and just like this is great my kid would love this i'll have you know her so but literally the script for this movie okay it opens up on him noticing a pickup truck from his deer stand with his rifle scope it just starts on the letters ext followed by all the redneck words mike norris could fit into one sentence (laughs) and he's using the scope this truck's 50 yards away from yeah, him. Right, so it's right, like this yeah. much truck. The whole screen is him. So dumb. So, okay, but the truck is a friend of his. So apparently we're post-apocalypse. We're six months after the apocalypse. The world ended six months ago. We will never decide on how the fucking world ended in this movie. And he is apparently giving out supplies to all the various Christian compounds that are still surviving after the apocalypse. Yeah. If I sum that he's, up. A, and he, well, I mean, he's giving supplies. He's focused more on ointments mostly than anything ointments. else. Mm-hmm. It's mostly, it's an ointment-based it's system. It's an ointment-based system. They have an ointment-based economy at this point. I love that the... he, that's what Mike Norris is focused on. Like, the apocalypse in his head is about to fucking happen, and he's like, we're going to need Neosporin. Because <laughs> I am rashy a lot. It's not even the apocalypse yet, and I am rashy. Imagine the horse scorpion locusts. They're going to give you a yeah, It's going to be rash. a lot. Yep. Figure. You're going to need some Neosporin, yeah. But the, So he, the guy shows up, and the guy's like, oh, yeah, all the people at my compound have gotten the disease. And he's like, really? I thought we were going with liberal terrorist cabal. <laughs> the disease, what the fuck happen, is happening now? Oh, I can't hear the voiceover, Mike. That's just you. <laughs> I thought my daughter was sick with the Antifa. <laughs> got a real bad she got an undercut overnight i just woke up and she had it you gotta put neosporin on that all right and then and then muslims show up to kill him surprise muslims (laughs) and these could we should throw out there what mike norris thinks of muslims is a terror. <laughs> it's a hell that we should all live in for a moment because he very clearly has no friends he could even close to match to Middle Eastern. So he was just like, all right, well, they wrap their heads, right? And then three smothered extras later, it's just like a winter cap over a third of his face. And he's just like, oh, Akbar, come on, man, it's hot out here. <laughs> Also, there is not a single extra in this shootout who is not making pq pq noises with oh, his mouth. Oh no. no, it's they might as well put censored bars in front of him and just like. <laughs> <laughs> and then okay, so but Mike Norris goes crazy. He gets to play guns now. It's fucking out of shape, John Wick, and I love it. He's just huffing and puffing around and shit. Everybody, he's nowhere near him. The extra's like, okay, fine, man, I'm done anyway. Can I please show my favorite piece of fight choreography in the entire thing? Please do. Oh, please do. So here's what happens with Mike Norris. There's a bad guy, and he has a machine gun, right? And Mike Norris has to lift his leg to here. And you can see in slow motion Mike Norris be like, please, I can't. I can't. Please lower that fucking gun. So what happens is this. (laughs) And then this fucking teenager who was promised two free hours of paintball just goes... (laughs) <laughs> like doesn't even fall he just sort of like I'm out 
I'm out. I'll, uh, no more Akbar. Just, just to be clear on the context, the Muslim army is working for the Jewish liberal cabal. Yes, yeah. right, yes. Th exactly. Those two are working together here. Exactly, to create a disease that the guy's daughter was dying. It's, 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 oh, there's a lot to keep track of. We'll have some push pins out here later and some yarn. So, yeah, and then, of course, the Muslim guy is like, he's disarmed now, right? Mike Norris has spun kicked the gun out of the guy's fucking It's a hand. roundhouse kick by Chuck Norris Jr. Yeah, it is. Please. It is. So he looks at, in the, the Muslim guy's like, but ha, 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 you're a Christian, so you can't kill me. Christians are too good for that. So, and he's like, oh, God damn it, you're right. I am. I am a Christian. A Muslim totally would do oh, No, I know. I would kill you in this situation, but you can't <laughs> kill me. So instead, because he's the good guy, he just zip ties the bad guy up and then beats the fuck out of him. <laughs> He's like, no, this is just enhanced interrogation. It's not even torture, technically, really. I mean, you're not even, if you ask the lawyers for the, uh, for the Justice Department. <laughs> but while this is happening, someone mysterious is watching Mike Norris from afar. Jordan Dragon King. It, it, it Spoiler is, alert. It is. It's the first gentleman of color in the movie. <laughs> But he can't do the still, like, silent, intimidating thing. So what we see is the back of him doing this. <laughs> like when you've told a five-year-old to count to ten, and they're just like... <laughs> <laughs> Seven. No, ten, ten. The full ten. <laughs> do I have to start over? <laughs> so... So Mike Norris drives away in his badass prepper truck. We'll talk more about his badass prepper truck in a moment. Yeah. Does it have bazookas attached to it? Okay, no, no. What it has is it has a cage all the way around it. Those are bars. So I believe that those are can... cage and bazookas. I'm not saying like, they're not it's... bazookas. I'm saying there's a cage it's there. It's a cage I mean... made of missiles, perhaps. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm not saying no, right? Like, you I can't, never I can't been to definitively com. say no. They have no. a cage of missiles. You could call it Missileless cage. <laughs> He's so. Don't encourage him. That was my brain. My brain worked so hard on that shitty joke. Like a single strand of blood came out of my nose. <laughs> I forgot all of third grade. I can't tell you what color my wife's eyes are in a missileless cage. Like the actor. My music cue for this scene, by the way, is Mark Wahlberg is going to fight his way out of that oil rig if it's the last thing he does. <laughs> yes, yes. That is the music for every fucking scene, regardless of what's happening in this movie. Yeah. So, yeah, so he drives away in his badass prepper truck, and the Muslim that he left chained to the place that he was, I believe he gets eaten by the first, first black man in the movie. It's going to go downhill from here, guys. <laughs> And also, okay, so the next part of the movie, we're getting this little montage of him driving around, or he's driving back to his ranch or whatever. And I only, I only bring this scene up because this introduces one of the themes of the movie, which is pensive squatting. All right? There are 133 scenes where we watch Mike Norris go like this. That's at least 20% of the film. My but we're like really not anywhere grow. close to Noah's mobility. Oh, oh, no, no, it's much slower, much slower. Every, every shot is defined by how long it was until Mike Norris toppled over. It was just like, <laughs> oh, there she goes, there she goes. <laughs> Flip me back. <laughs> the sun is drying out my porticultus. <laughs> uh, for the Karate. audience listening at home, Eli is now just rolling around like a turtle. <laughs> That's the humor that you get when you come to the live show. That's right. Should have come to the live show. So, all right. So the, now we're going to get introduced to Chuck Norris or to Mike Norris's amazing Christian. We have this the establishing shot of the Christian compound. It's everything that I've ever wanted in my life. We see all the different, like all the people post apocalypse, all seeming to have a great old time. It, it, like honestly, it's just, they it's should... just Lou 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 doing apocalypse stuff. <laughs> <laughs> This guy, like, whittling a sharp stick into yep. 
an AR-15 somehow and like <laughs> fixing a pile of tires for, I don't know, for tires having. Also, apparently this community is made up of a college brochure. Like yes. they have every, at one point I expected like an Eskimo guy to pop out and be like, hey, I got the fish today. And they're like, thank you, Binky, come on. Yeah, no, no, the, there was a very look how racist this movie isn't kind of going on to that in, the, in that scene. Although I will say all the people of color start causing problems immediately. Immediately. <laughs> Uh, we'll get to that. But first, we need to spend some time on the fire pit. <laughs> Ooh. Because <laughs> who had a whole... 24% or more of this movie being made up of fire pit talk? Because you won. You won. A hole in the ground with stones around it. And a decorative gazebo fence. Oh, well, yes, there is a decorative gazebo For fence. For their Thank apocalypse you. compound. <laughs> yes. That's a priority. Because, you know, there's no reason, just because it's the apocalypse, there's no reason to give up on aesthetics. Is that, that's, that's all they're saying. But yeah, so one, one of the characters, this is Randy, he'll be very important for 16 minutes and then we'll never see him again. He has made a fire pit and everyone's super excited about the fucking fire pit. And he explains to them while they're, they're having like a ceremony, uh, like a ribbon cutting on the fire pit. And he explains to everyone that it will be a conduit to God, that they'll all be able to hang out around the fire pit and talk to God, who's obviously really nailing it of late. <laughs> <laughs> it's so stupid. Everything they do. They also, we, we also get a, a decoration for the fire pit, not just the gazebo fence. Somebody has welded, <laughs> has used their only welding tools and their gas power generator at their compound to make a little like restoration hardware like welded outside that says the title of their apocalypse okay compound. so here's the thing somebody told mike norris that the, that, the, that the title of the movie had to have a double meaning the cr title of the movie is the crossroads of hunter fucking wild oh my god i hadn't pieced this together hunter wild is the case hunter and then wild so it's totally different you, you get it as the character's name but it's the crossroads of Hunter Wild. The name of the town, you see, is Crossroads, which they Ooh. introduced cleverly right here by the girl saying, I made a sign that said Crossroads. That's the name of our town. <laughs> it's really good writing. It really is. They nailed it. Still has the old country <laughs> kitchen tag on it. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to hide it. So, okay. You can still see it. So, Mike no. Mike Norris is still coming back in his missileless cage truck, um, but he's. Thank you. That joke works so well. It, was, it just really, it just kind of came to me. If you would like a missileless cage T-shirt, <laughs> they're selling a lot better than the "Please Let Me Suck Your Dick" album. So, shouldn't have gone for a Christmas album. It's fucking February. It's a stupid. That's on me. Morgan right. worked so hard. Love you, buddy. So. Mike Norris gets back in his in his cage truck. He gets back to his fucking Christian compound with its giant American flag. They all run back to greet him and to find out what happened. You know, they're like, did anything exciting and adventurous happen to you in the last scene? He's like, why it did? <laughs> the answer is... <laughs> we... <laughs> we got jumped by ISIS rebels. ISIS rebels... <laughs> In Texas, it's weird that ISIS was able to take over, you know, the well-armed citizenry of Texas. Right, I thought that really, was there were so many good guys with guns. But that's what's happened. Yep. And they got jumped for their ointments. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so, plot ISIS, takes off. ISIS rebels. They finally beat it. the rebels, and it's like, but at what ashiness? At what <laughs> ashiness? Jesus. Also... <laughs> not worth it also if a Jewish cabal took over the country wouldn't ISIS be on the same team as the preppers in Texas at that point I, I don't think the movie is aware yeah, of this no, I, I just no. like that they're getting along so well oh, okay. <laughs> it's just nice for one me. state solution Texas yeah <laughs> you're welcome Palestine and Israel. You didn't even have to read 50 fucking books, Kushner. Your move. <laughs> your move, motherfucker. <laughs> so, so, yeah, so he explains to everyone that the goddamn ISIS rebels took over, and, and he has to throw in the thing with him. He's like, he's like, yeah, we were jumped by ISIS rebels, and 
I don't know, there's a fucking virus, too. I don't, it seems like Frank needed zombies in the movie for some reason. I don't know. Mike Norris just made a list of his greatest fears, and it was like, all right, ISIS, obviously, ISIS. Um, coronavirus, coronavirus, right? Coronavirus, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Jewish media, done. Okay. Got it, got it. <laughs> Excellent. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that, oh, oh, and then we have, to, we have to mention the guys who are on watch. So this, there's this entire weird subplot that there's these three guys who are on perpetual watch. It's like there's three names in a hat, and they pull out three names every night mm-hmm. or something, right? And they all want to go, or two of them want to go to see the fucking fire pit because it's pretty exciting shit. And the I third guy will not leave. <laughs> there's a gazebo gate and everything. It's Her lovely. It's sweet. But the third guy will not let him go see the fucking fire pit. And up till now, that has been the plot of the film. Oh, right? I thought one of them was going to die, and his last request was going to be to be dragged over to the fire <laughs> pit. It's like he's got a marshmallow coughing up blood. <laughs> oh, burned it. <sighs> so, but now the goddamn characters are going to play Go Fish. These three characters have decided to play Go Fish. The card name Mike Norris could name. The card yeah. Name yeah like, yes. I got one. And the actors are playing it like they're playing poker, which is fucking amazing. Right. He's like, yes. you guys ready to go hardcore? Go fish. Ante up your pretzel sticks, motherfucker. <laughs> well, no passing on the draw. So. <laughs> yes, twos and sixes are wild. So, but here's the thing. So to play go fish, the first guy, he pulls out his cards. He takes three cards off the top and sets them aside. I so wanted the scene to continue. I wanted that shot to continue, but you know he, like, chewed through his own fucking wrists or something immediately after that because he had no idea how cards might be dealt out for Go Fucking Fish, right? That's all we got. How do you play Go Fish? <laughs> you deal out seven cards you to see, each person. And, and then you, you know what? Never mind. I'll show you later. Quality fucking podcast content. So, <laughs> So, okay, but now we have to go to, like, the main, I don't know, compound planning room with the radio and shit. This is where Mike Norris is hanging out with uh, Pastor Paul. (laughs) And Pastor Paul is all pissed off. that God, Jesus, sounds like I'm doing a fucking tongue twister. Pastor Paul is all pissed off that they haven't been raptured. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And this is... This is where they do the fist bump. Oh, God. The worst. (laughs) Yes. You need to be able to see this. This is how it goes. (laughs) Do we do it right? Yep. Okay. <sighs> Dragon King taught us that one. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we're in the apocalypse. And this is also where we're going to meet uh, Joe. This is uh, Mike Norris's character's daughter, who I thought was his love interest for a very long time in the movie. So it did he. Super so goddamn did he. confusing. Yeah. Yeah. She turns out to be the daughter. After some intense mid-film negotiations on her part, I think. (laughs) But the key is, though, is the pastor, their spiritual leader, the guy who's going to spend the entire movie reading the fucking Bible, is starting to think that the rapture happened, right? The apocalypse happened. They didn't get raptured, and therefore they're on the wrong track. Maybe Allah was really Akbar the whole time. (laughs) Oh, that would have been so much better if Pastor Paul's subplot had just been him, like, secretly trying out other religions. Like, they walk in, he's meditating, and they're like, what are you doing? Nothing! Nothing! nothing, nothing." (laughs) What's up? He's got a turban on in one scene. What? It's a costume party! I was just seeking. (laughs) I read all of Cecil's lines. All right, so meanwhile, the, ba- the, uh, the guards are still playing Go Fish, and we've seen that the evil demon is wandering around inside their compound. Now, the evil demon, all we've seen is we've seen his eyes, and, and we've seen him from the back, and we know he's wearing a hoodie. So we know he's an African-American gentleman in a hoodie. Like, if the bad guy in this movie is Trayvon Martin, I'll be 0% surprised. Yeah. This movie is the apocalypse, and the fact that a black guy in a hoodie makes it through this Christian compound is the least realistic thing in the movie. <laughs> also, I want to talk about the eyes, because so someone took a makeup class or heard about a makeup class or <laughs> YouTubed makeup because they were like, under eye makeup is scary, but they use a dark blue eyeshadow. So he just looks like a drag queen mist <laughs> the entire time. 
at a certain point, this black man will be in blackface. It gets really confusing. Yeah, the makeup, makeup choices that they make in this. You um, could say he has the bluest eye. <laughs> I like to think that they can hear everything we're saying. And their audience has just gone from horrified to like, hmm. <laughs> All right, I got to admit, that was pretty good. I didn't see that one coming. I didn't see that one coming. All right. So now Wally, who is the, the, the go fish savant of the group, Wally goes off to pee. And we all have, it, so he's off pee, he goes off to pee, and then the demon's like, hey, and he turns around, and all of us have in our fucking notes, is he, is he peeing on the demon or what? And the movie never explores that. The oh. demon's really pissed afterwards, so probably. I want to watch that scene so bad where he's just like, Wally. Oh, come on, man! <laughs> There's no way for me to spin this story, Wally. <laughs> oh, how was it being on Earth for the first time? It was fine. I got peed on. Fuck you, Wally. <laughs> you ruined my first demoning. <laughs> Pee all over my shoes now. The best case scenario I can say is that I peed on my own shoes <laughs> while I was on Earth. Give me your eye makeup. <laughs> I'm a winter motherfucker. So, <laughs> so yeah, so so Wally pisses on the demon. Fight a nickel. Is, <laughs> and 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 then he walks back. He's freaking out. All the buddies that he's been playing go fish with are like, uh, you know, they're like, hey man, how was I peed the on a demon. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> you peed on a demon. <laughs> what? So and he runs off, and everybody's like. It's the middle of his fucking shift. I don't know what the hell why he's running away. <laughs> Fucker. So now we're back in the little planning room, and we cut in the middle of the uh, conversation, right? When we last were in this planning room, Pastor Paul was talking about how, you know, God maybe doesn't exist at all and the rapture's bullshit. So we cut in with this one character going like, but God didn't cause the bad stuff. He only gets credit for the good stuff. That's the middle of the conversation that we car that we car charge in on, and no one corrects him or anything. And I was like, "Real, no, that Paul, he is right." He don't is be right. silly. God didn't cause this. This was a normal, everyday Antifa virus, <laughs> Chinese liberal Jew, Jew bomb attack, Muslim ISIS, <laughs> Muslim ISIS bomb. Cool. People not buying my Christmas album for nineteen ninety nine. You think it was that? At, let me suck your dick. The Christmas what? hits dot com. <laughs> What did you say? The apocalypse? I said the apocalypse. Apocalypse. Okay. Got it. I think it. I mean, I peed on a demon. You did you? <laughs> so did Wally. <laughs> so okay. So they're standing around the, the, the this room talking about God's role in this movie up to this point. When all of a sudden, the wife of Randy, the guy who made the fire pit, comes in. She's like, "Has anybody seen my husband? He was walking around. Uh, I don't know, demon possessed earlier. He went on like a normal. He had a noose. It was like a normal." Like a night noose walk. A noose walk, yeah. Has anybody... He didn't come back, though. And, and, and has anybody seen him? And they're Did like, anybody pee on a demon? Because I feel like this is related. <laughs> so, so they're like, well, we, can, we, know, we all know how to handle a missing person in here. We should all stand exactly shoulder to shoulder and all yell his name repeatedly as we walk through the woods shining flashlights at each other. So they do that. <laughs> Eli? He's gone. <laughs> if you want a new husband, Wally just peed on a demon. That's a pretty cool... That's like a good Tinder bio line. That you're... Do you get a bio line in Tinder? You get a... You can write about peeing on the first... No? Can you not? So... <laughs> you know what? Let's not explore this. <laughs> Second thought. Or first. Whichever. All right. So they're walking around, they're looking for Randy, and all of a sudden, Mike Norris hears the demon, right? The demon voice says, uh, check the pavilion. Right? <laughs> this is where Mike Norris is like, hey, Steve, um, did you just say check the pavilion, but like a demon? What? <laughs> did you? No? I wanted so badly for the demon to say other fancy words for the rest of the movie, just like... I've poisoned the croquettes. <laughs> Please Jeez. enjoy an amuse-bouche. <laughs> Pass me the wicker basket, Satan. <laughs> is, 
Is wicker a fancy word to you? <laughs> Very much a fancy word. All right. So they go to the... He's like, did, did somebody say check the pavilion? And everybody's like, no, nobody said that. They're like... It, well, well just in check case. The yeah, let's check the pavilion anyway. I feel obviously. like a demon said check the pavilion. We're going to check it. <laughs> so, Which leads us to believe that the other characters are just used to Mike Norris's character uh-huh. being like, did someone say tacos for dinner? <laughs> Mike, do you no. want tacos for dinner? Nope, it was probably a demon, but we should have tacos for dinner. <laughs> just, just to be safe. So they go to the pavilion, and they find Randy there, but damn it if Randy hasn't hung himself. <gasps> And, wow. th- and their focus, you by the way... You invested on Randy. <laughs> yeah. He does not matter. And their focus the entire time is, how did he get up there? Because he's, like, hung from the center yeah, of the pavilion. Yeah, right, right. No, they, they're, like, they're like, wait a minute. How could he hang himself way the hell up there? Oh, how many deleted cuts of this movie are there where Mike Norris was like, he stood on a block of ice. I know this one. <laughs> <laughs> cut, cut me, me cut. <laughs> That's on me. The surgeon's a woman. I know this one. Nope. Sorry. I don't have any lines in this part. So, it's a little person. He has an umbrella because it's raining. So. <laughs> no. No. He. Do not go for that. Should I ask that. him what? I no, want to ask him what. Don't fucking bite. Don't bite that. There's a worm hanging off of a fucking hook right in front of you. What? Why would you? You're going to think about it for the rest of your life. I'm not going to tell you. You're going to wake up at four in the morning, six years after I'm dead, and you're going to be like, why would the little person... I don't person understand why. How does that... Everyone has an umbrella when it rains. So... All right. So now that... <laughs> I'm Googling something. All right. Come back stop, to me. Stop Googling. It's no Googling. It's in the rules. I should not have Googled that. Okay. <laughs> So yeah, so they're all trying to figure out how could how could this have happened, right? And uh, then he starts hearing demonic laughter. Mike Norris does, right? And he's like, "What are you guys laughing at? That he's he's hung over there. That's, this ain't funny. This is serious. This is a serious apocalypse hanging." But yeah, come on now, come on. Of Randy. <laughs> you're, you're you're not gonna use any of the jokes that you have written in there. To, okay, you're just gonna leave me hanging and twisting in the wind there. Thank you. Eli. If, Much if, like if, the demon left Randy. <laughs> Full circle, yes. All right, well, I'll tell you what. If you think that the mysterious death of Randy and Hunter's apparent guilt since he's the one that told them to go to the pavilion finally gave us a plot or that those things will ever be revisited, <laughs> I want to give you another minute to live in that moment. So we're going to take a quick break, but we'll be back soon with even more. The Crossroads of Hunter Wilde. Lou, 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 doing Heath stuff. Heath stuff is my favorite stuff. Hey, Heath, what you doing? Oh, hey, uh, just Heath stuff, like, like you heard me saying. You know, I've always wondered, what is Heath stuff? Uh, dolce far niente, I guess would be the best. That's what to describe it. Dolce far niente. Is it an ice cream? I want some of the ice cream. If it's uh, in- no, it's Italian for the pleasure of doing absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing? Absolutely nothing. But that's not the only great thing the Italians gave us. They also gave us Peroni. Those little dumpling things? No. I think those are Ukrainian. No, 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 no. Peroni is a refined beer with a distinctive, crisp, and refreshing taste and a balanced aroma. It's the ideal beer to enjoy when you want to relax. Whether it's an informal night with friends or a special celebration, Peroni is ideal for enjoying in style. Wow, that sounds really delicious. It is. Look for Peroni for your next happy hour, or as the Italians call it, aperitivo. Find it in cans and bottles at your local grocery store and follow them on Instagram at Peroni USA. Peroni Italia. Whatever you do, do it beautifully. For people over the age of 21 only. 2020 imported by Bira Peroni International, Washington, D.C. You know what, Heath? I think I'll join you in doing nothing. All right. By all means, let's do it together. Nothing. You think Norman Rockwell ever wrote angry okay. letters no, to his dad? Sh- 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 you're doing it wrong. What? I was just asking. No, just, never mind. Okay, everybody, gather around. Uh, yes, Hunter. Yeah, so we're going to survive this thing together. There's some things we're going to need. Like what, Daddy? Glad you asked, honey. Uh, I need you to 
uh, make a weird uh, metal like sign that says crossroads on it. You you want me to make a sign for our apocalypse uh, for our, shelter? For our apocalypse shelter, yes, uh, that says crossroads. Or, you know, live, laugh, love, or whatever you think. Something like that. Uh, okay. Great, great. Uh, and Randy and Stephanie, you've actually got the most important job. We have fuel, we have water, we have 340 baker buckets, but we need you to, to make a fire pit. Oh, um, oh, I'm sorry, a fire pit. Yeah, fire pit, yep. Uh, you know, for like toasting marshmallows and stuff. Right, toasting marshmallows. Hunter, don't you think we're going to need to build extra housing? Right, so we can rescue mm. people from the outside or, or, or maybe build mm. up defenses against the zombies or whatever. This yeah, is. yeah, yeah, that, 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 that's good stuff. Um, but first and foremost, like I said, a fire pit. Thank you. A pit for fire. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can't rescue people without s'mores, can you? you? You can, though. Yeah, definitely can. You, you want to? And we're back. <laughs> and so is late person. Congratulations. <laughs> so, and of course, when we last left off, a demon was in a brutal prank war with Mike Norris. We're going to find out more about that in a minute. It is. It's a prank war. It's it, the best. It's, that, that's not an exaggeration. That's going to nope, be the plot. Go ahead. Nope. But if you doubted that at all, we're about to make that shit explicit by visiting actual hell. <laughs> where well, I shit you not well I'm guessing I'm guessing I mean where Satan and his minion are actively plotting against Mike Norris when you say hell though this is important um <laughs> thank you you mean Mike Norris's garage where he's bought one or two red lights yep yep and he's also bought some disconnected plumbing somehow and a few like decorative chains, <laughs> which his chains he will not stop playing with. His minion is distracted by the entire time. entire time. There will never be a scene between the two of them where he's not like Mike Norris. Will fall. Hey, hey, hey! Will you, we're in a movie. You got? Just, can you stop for a second? Kubrati. <laughs> fall to I changed my name to Dragon King. Dragon King. So you. You hit it again. Can you just look at... There it is. You deserve that. I just fist bump so, with the chain. <laughs> it knows my secret handshake now. So Satan and his, his demon Dagon, that's, that's Jordan, Dragon King. Just a subset of his name. He yep. was like, yep. Dagon. I'll get it <laughs> if you say that. Close. But he wants, he's just, Satan says, you can go and you can take any soul that you want. Find the strongest soul for it to be, you know, whatever, the warrior leader Mike for our Norris. game. Yep. <laughs> yep, exactly. And he's like, oh, I know exactly who the fuck I want. I want Mike fucking Norris. Lynchpin of humanity, <laughs> Mike Norris. I want Chuck Norris's third favorite child. <laughs> Bring him to me. So, yeah, so bad guy wants good guy because good guy is good guy. And then he's like, he's like, okay, Satan's like, all right, Dagon, how will you accomplish this? How will you bring him to the dark side? And he goes, figure like I would switch around his papers and shit. Like he would be looking for a paper. And he'd be like, I swear it was right there. And then, and then he'd look away and then he'd come back and it would be there. It had been there the whole time. So why was he even looking around? You want to know my evil plan? He will walk the house looking for his keys and not find them. <laughs> Only to discover they are in his hand, Satan. They will be in his hand the entire time. He'll just be holding the keys. Yeah, and you're like, ha oh. <laughs> oh, you were done. Oh, I'm done, yeah. <laughs> okay. And like, seriously, <laughs> that's the, it's prank war. They're going to do a prank they war on Mike prank Norris war. Yep. by demons. They cut away here, but I really wanted to see this whole meeting play out. It would have been great. Doodly doo. Doodly doo. Doodly doo. I'll create chaos in his home. <laughs> Startle people in the woods. 
kinda. And uh, yeah, Dagon, uh, quick thing. Love the creativity. Love it. Um, but I'm Satan, you know, Prince of Darkness, right? Um, I- I'm thinking maybe we just... Can you focus up? Yep. Satan, great. I was thinking we push ahead. I had a plan going with a nuclear apocalypse. It's ready to go. I think we just push ahead with that. Oh, no, give me a chance. This low-level prank war on Hunter Wild is perfect. Uh, I guess, no, I, lo- I love the enthusiasm. You're, you're into it. You're into it. I just feel like you're, you're thinking really small, like small scale. Do, are you okay? You said we could try my next idea. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. No, I did. S- great. That's I, great. I, 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 awesome. I'm going to get my pranks ready. Just hope I don't get peed on again. <laughs> Sorry, what? Oh, yeah. I got peed on by a teenager. <laughs> Woof. Right? Wow. All right. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. And then it's, then it's up to me and Morgan you. to figure out where the fuck to cut the edit for the uh, for the podcast that we do there. <laughs> Thank you, Eli, for that. All right. So then we head we had back to Mike Norris. He's, he's with his daughter, and she's like, hey, you know, I don't want to make too point a point on this, but uh, last time we were on screen together, there was a dead guy, and he was hung in a way that one could not hang himself, and you knew where he was because you heard a demonic voice. So... Um, I have an obvious question here. Are you being haunted by a demon? What? <laughs> do, do, do I pee on me? <laughs> Did I? No. What? No, like her question at this point is, have you prayed? Yeah, well, because she says, how do you fight something you can't see? And her answer is prayer. And I really want to test that theory with blindfolds, Mike Norris, and some dodgeballs. Just like... <laughs> He's in your movie, Mike. Bang. Oh. Yeah, that hurts. Right there. Should have prayed harder. <laughs> Paul's trying Jew God if you want to. No? All right, it rolled back to me. <laughs> so, okay. And then we head over to uh, Randy's funeral. Mike Norris is standing off there. He doesn't want to go all the way over to the funeral because then he'd have to do sad acting, right? <laughs> and Wally, who got who peed on the demon, is even he's like on the there. Wally's over there. He's he's in the edge of the woods, and everybody's like, "Hey, man, um, you want to come? We're doing a funeral. You want to come to like normal funeral distance? You're being weird. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> okay." You still worried about the demon you peed on, bud? Yeah? Yeah? Can just for a second? We got a sign. (laughs) Thank you. So, So, okay. The funeral ends, and then Mike Norris is going to run off. He wants to go off and find out more about liberal Jew ISIS. His daughter, who has every reason to believe that he's insane and just killed Randy by hanging him, Feels like he's running away from something, but can't imagine what it might be. <laughs> His plan, he's like, I, it's fine. I'm going to drive out like 50 miles, right? Mm-hmm. I'm going to like do concentric circles in mm-hmm. and slowly kill Muslims along the way. <laughs> what the fuck is your problem? You're I'm probably going to level up at a certain point, you know, and kill enough of them. But so, okay, but the moral of this story seems to be when your loved ones hear voices that tell them to kill Muslims... Hear him out on that shit. Don't just assume <laughs> that it's a mental illness. Sometimes that's what's happening. Right? Up to this point? Okay. I didn't hang Randy. <laughs> Did you ask? She goes, she goes, and of course, her, her concern isn't like, you know, I, you look like you murdered the guy and now you're running off. Her concern is that that demon is going to get him. So he has to assure her, he's like, ain't no demon going to get me. I'm too resilient. And then he runs off. Right? He might as well tell her to, like, try and demon me as hard as you can right in the stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. Try and demon me right in the stomach. <laughs> oh, I wasn't ready. <laughs> Great, I shat. <laughs> End the movie. <laughs> Bring me a wicker basket. <laughs> so, so, meanwhile, back in the main planning room, uh, we've got one character. He's tuning around on his radio. He's trying to, like, listen in for other survivors out there somewhere. 
And Pastor Paul is fucking with him, you know, just like the, 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 the peanut gallery in the background. You're never going to find anything, you fuck. You fuck. Not on that frequency either. Never. You've been doing this for seven fucking years. Nothing. 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 The whole fucking time. <laughs> And then, of course, after fucking with him for not being able to find anything, Pastor Paul goes back to reading the Bible. So. <laughs> and he's convinced that the Bible's like, no, it says we're going to be fine. We're going to be totally fine. And everybody else is like, is, does it say that? Because <laughs> I read it. It's, there's like scorpion, horse, locusts, <laughs> face of a lion. We need so much ointment for those. Yeah, that's it. And it's very clear that he's looking for something he missed, right? Like he's like he's gonna turn a page and be like, ah, <laughs> yeah, circle, circle, dot, dot. <laughs> now I have a cootie shot. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck! What did he do? What did he do? <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Such a long book. So. <laughs> <laughs> Try stoning your daughter on her doorstep. <laughs> I didn't write the book, people. I'm the opposite of the book. Literally. In all possible ways. Book made out of paper. Me made out of flesh. So, there's all the ways? I had a lot of... Just, okay, all right, like, yeah. No, let's, we'll move on. We'll move on. Um, but but what's amazing though is that the, the conversation that these two guys end up having is like it's isn't it crazy how Christianity even sees, seems like bullshit in our own movies most of the time, and then like one character after the other comes in and just tries to bid up a plot point. One character comes in and says Hunter Wilde is gone, and they're like, yeah, we really don't have a reason to care about that. So then Randy, Randy's wife comes in, right, or his, his uh, widow comes in and she says, I'm leaving, and they're like, oh, see, now that is a way better plot point. <laughs> than the fact that somebody just left. So they follow her. Oh, and this anti-climax is fucking amazing, right? At, oh, it's, she wants gate. to get out of the compound. She's leaving the compound once for all. They get, it's just like a single <laughs> slat of fence. And you watch these three poor Christian actors who just wanted Mike to like leave them alone on Facebook. Just be like, She's, there's, there's like six minutes of build up to that while she's, yeah, while she's like yelling at him, please let me out of the game. She's doing all this backpack work the whole time. She keeps tightening straps every few seconds, is loosening them back up so that she might tighten them again. And they're all arguing about whether she should go. And then finally, it's like somebody's like, we got to end this fucking scene. I guess we just open the gate. I'll just slightly walk around it five feet to the no, right if you guys don't open it. It's not it's, like a gate to a fence. It's an nothing. independent gate. It's a paintball court. It's the, it's the opening to the parking lot of a paintball course. <laughs> She's like, I can see space. There's a tire. I might trip on the tire for a second. So, all right. So, of course, Mike Norris is still driving around looking for Jew Muslims. Yeah, so he's surprised he hasn't, had, he hasn't found any yet. But meanwhile, back in hell, Jordan Dragon King is throwing shit against the wall, punching holes in the fucking drywall, yelling like, uh, you know, we've been able to corrupt the presidents and the popes and the senators and the kings, but not this one redneck prepper in Texas who is somehow mightier mentally than all those motherfuckers that went to fancy colleges and shit. Right? <laughs> That's the whole fucking scene. That's the plot of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the, as, as Dagon's doing that, Satan's just looking around at all those pipes going like, I want to, I don't know why I want to bat. I'm so <laughs> fucking bad. But I do. I really just do. I wanted to see this like a uh, performance review, like Satan and Dagon like talking about how things are going. Oh, that sounds like a doodly doo, doodly doo, doodly doo. Uh, Dagon, uh, thanks for coming in. Appreciate Happy to be it. here. Happy yeah. to be here. Great. So again, today is really just informal. I feel like you're gonna. Oh, okay, you're paying attention. Cool. It's it's just a chance for me to check in, you know, and uh, give feedback. It's no. Are you turning towards? Can you turn back towards me? Just yep, yeah. great. So just uh, feedback. Yeah, know, yeah, No big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Cool. Are you, you... You batting the chain there again? I feel like you... Did you... Can you stop? You're going to stop. Okay, great. Because while, it's while we talk, 
Wonderful. All right. So um, I like to start with a compliment. Start things off nice. So your uh, your capoeira is is going good. You're getting good at that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Not enough demons, you know, take time for themselves for yeah. hobbies. Yeah, I really try. Mm-hmm. You know. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Can you just not touch the chain at all for the rest of? Great. Yep. It's just super distracting because I'm trying to do a review and oh. you're you're gonna stop. Go ahead. Great. Great. So just first thing, constructive criticism here. Quick thing. Your goal for this quarter was to um, corrupt the soul of Hunter Wilde. Mm-hmm. H- how do you feel that's going? Well, um, I killed his friend. <laughs> oh, okay. Did, do you feel like that helped? Or... I don't know. <laughs> yeah, can, can you just... Can you just put it for the rest? Just don't at all. Great. Thank you. I spoke to HR. Okay. I told them I need it. You you need the chain? It's for my anxiety. You have a... You you have an an emotional support chain? Yes. Who did... Did... You're actually not allowed to ask me about it. (laughs) Yeah, no, again, that's all going to translate really well to audio medium, yeah, guys. Thank great. you so much for that. All right, so so Mike Norris uh, is, is out wandering around, circling back and killing Muslims where he can. He's asking, he's trying to decide, he's asking God where he should go via his little tiny pocket Bible, right? So he's sitting there at this bench, looking at his little pocket Bible, saying out loud, God, where should I go? And Hoodie Demon, Jordan Dragon King, is standing right next to him. <laughs> And he doesn't notice him for so long. Like, the actor's mad. Like, obviously, the demon's mad, too, but the actor is so angry. He's like, excuse me, sir, I'm a demon. Did you not hear the, like, the tiger growling noise when I show up? (laughs) You didn't hear that? Well, but see, the thing is, is that they're going for the whole he's invisible to Mike Norris, Mike Norris can't see him thing or whatever. But we don't know that. And he's standing just off and behind him. So for the longest time, it seems like the demon's just going to go... <laughs> you know what? I learned my lesson the first time. Are you peeing? <laughs> Can't surprise you motherfuckers for shit. So, is any liquid spraying out of your body in a stream right now? No. Good, because I got a whole scary thing I want to do. <laughs> so, so, the demon has this long like monologue where he's telling Mike Norris, like, you don't really believe in Jesus, though, do you? Right? That's as, as near as I can tell the, the entire point. But the, the one is like the internal politics of this 20-person Texas compound determines well, that too, yeah. the fate of the universe. And he's explaining oh, really? that to him. It does. Oh, okay. Right. But then he's like, but also you're kind of sad. You're like, you're a little antsy. Maybe you drive out and like concentrically circle back to murder Muslims. I don't know, something like that. Right, right, Yeah. He's tempting him with something I don't, I know not what. Okay, so we cut back to Crossroads. We cut back to the uh, to the little town, the, their their little compound, and his daughter is gathering up all the other named characters. You know, she's like, "Come on, we're gonna go have a scene together." Like, "Oh, okay, cool." <laughs> Her question for everybody: It's like all the guard guys, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. She's like, "Did anybody um, see anything weird recently?" And two of them are like, "No, no." And Molly's like, "You are." <laughs> she's like okay you're like violently trembling you yelled you are for no reason did, did you see a demon Wally no <laughs> you were being really weird after you peed last night did you pee on a demon <laughs> yow <laughs> I love, okay, so finally she coaxes it out of him, right? He's like, yes, I did uh, pee on a demon last night. It's just so embarrassing for both of us, really. I didn't want to bring it up. And then he starts describing him. He goes like, 
I was staring right at him, but I couldn't see him. He was the embodiment of pure evil. And then the fucking girl, the daughter, goes, was it someone from around here? <laughs> well, yeah, no, it was that. I just thought if I said the embodiment of pure evil, you'd think, Ed, no, it wasn't fucking somebody from around here. Cam camera pans over slightly to Ed, who's the embodiment of pure evil. <laughs> I don't describe you as fat Christine, just saying. <laughs> Oh, was it Christine? I have a name. <laughs> so she's like, all right, well, I guess we should all go out and look for, you know, cl clues. <laughs> Just general yeah. clues. Like, what kind of demon was it? Like, what kind of demon did it look like? And she's like, you know, just let me know about any demon you find. <laughs> <laughs> Any demon type thing. That would be a clue that there's a demon. That's perfect. There's also there's this great one where she sends everybody out. She's like, you know, go look for clues to what the next scene in the movie's about. And then she calls them all back, right? Columbus. Them. She calls them all back. She's like, wait, wait, one last thing. Whatever you do, believe in God really fucking hard for the rest of the movie. That's gonna matter. <laughs> or else you probably won't find a demon. <laughs> <laughs> Christian or else this demon hunt is not going to work out. It's going to seem fucking stupid, I'll tell you right now. Dumb. So, okay, we, we, then we, we cut down to hell for a little bit longer so Satan can Willem Dafoe his little... So the, every time we cut back to the little garage hell that they're in, there's two pe there's two other guys. Two people in hell. Yeah, there's two there's two caged extras whose job it is to just go, oh no, once in a while. <laughs> But the toxic masculinity is too strong, so they can't wail and cry for more than three seconds at a time. Right. So it's like, no, I'm actually fine. <laughs> I'll get it all in one fucking trip. I'm rubbing some dirt in all it. of these bags. <laughs> I measured once. <laughs> I deserve this. I do. I deserve this. Oh, and we also, we have to introduce Alzheimer's dad. So there's this character that we've seen a couple of times in the movie now. He's, he's Alzheimer's dad. We, have, we, haven't, we, we haven't really established until now that he has Alzheimer's. He's just been a guy in a suit and tie during the apocalypse. He's just been a guy in a Christian compound. It's hard to tell. Yeah. <laughs> Blank look on your face doesn't work as an acting choice in a Christian movie. No. <laughs> but... <laughs> but Alzheimer's dad a, a, a couple of times in the movie Alzheimer's dad will just stop being crazy or ha having dementia for whatever or for a second and he'll go Mike Norris will protect us the devil is after him right he does that several times he's like the uh, I, I don't know like the uh, the magic eight ball of this film he's like a less subtle dying mom in signs <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Like she's exactly. crashed into the tree and she's like, come on, man, a little mystery. <laughs> so, <laughs> all right, so we, we head back to hell for a minute. Like, um, Satan is ribbing Jordan Dragon King for his lack of demoning skills, right? This is the one where, like, uh, Satan makes Dagon ask him. He's like, I know, I do know how to help, but I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna tell you unless you ask. You oh, ask for my help watching yet. Satan apply 10 minute manager here is my <laughs> everything. <laughs> So, you know, uh, Dagon, I actually have a sword. That, that big one right there? Mm -hmm. well, okay. Well, I'm, I'm sowing chaos, so what were you going to do with the sword? Nope, doesn't matter. Okay, no, I mean, just, <laughs> like, tell me, because I'll, I might, if it's a good idea. In what ways could you have solved this problem before you came to I feel to like, me, okay, Dagon. now, just, because you, you have the answer. I didn't read the book. I feel like you read the book. I read the back. You read the book. Just like everyone else who read 10 Minute Manager. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, but yeah, but Satan explains to him that chaos will never work. Ka people like Mike Norris thrive on chaos. He's doing it on purpose. Trust me, guys. He's meant, he means for his house to look like that. <laughs> but, but Dagon pushes back by explaining that he's not new to this shit. <laughs> this is where they try to use the word millennia. <laughs> he has spent. Like he Mike Norris. <laughs> the demon says, hey, I've spent a millennia in the field. Yeah. So Mike Norris apparently thinks millennia is just like a fancy version of millennium. It's, it's, and, and the, it's very, the feminine. It's, okay, maybe it's the feminine? Yes. Yeah. And this is confirmed. Very next line from Dagger yes. is like, 
a millennia is but a speck of time. And it's like, yep, they think it's a fancy <laughs> yes. word for millennia. <laughs> and fantastic. If I'm not mistaken, his big threat for Dagon is that, like, if he doesn't get Mike Norris soon, he's going to be the only one on Doomsday without a buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that is it. You want to be the only one on Doomsday without a cage buddy, Dagon? Because this is what happens. You don't get to be, it's not like a teacher where you get to be my partner because no one will be partners with you. You've got to get your own cage, buddy. Can I play with the sword? No, well, the, you cannot. There's also this bizarre moment where they try to do dimensions, where they try to figure out what dimensions are. Wow, that was, <laughs> abs- they, they experiment with each other in the most beautiful way. They're like, the first dimension is the way you look. Tonight. Right? Tonight. <laughs> Second is regular. Regular dimension. Is regular dimension. Sure. Uh, is there's the four, one. I Obviously. believe. Mm-hmm. Four. What was yours? The third. The third. Yeah. And the third is confusion. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> yelling at doors. We'll combine yep, those yes, two. Confusion. confusion and yelling at doors. <laughs> Fourth dimension. Jesus. Yeah, I got it. Jesus. Yeah. Yes. Oh, it was it was so awesome. They're like, I, he see, he's like, look through the four dimensions and see him. And he's like, you know, in the first dimension, I see that he is in disarray. And in the second dimension, he is afraid. In the third dimension, he is confused. In the fourth dimension, I see a shadow. And then they're like, really, shadow? We're going shadow. We couldn't come up with another. We had we had a, you had a theme going with the first three. And he's like, yeah, no, I kind of ran out of gas. I think. I think there's only three dimensions. You know what actually, I peed on earlier today? <laughs> <laughs> See the shadow of a teenager peeing on me. That's weird because you didn't go out in the field. So <laughs> unrelated. So meanwhile, okay. So Mike Norris is out there. The, he's still waiting for God. It's, it's like he's like it, ni- neither him or God will say that they're ready to leave or something, right? Because he's still out there. He's, he's just going there. I'm like seriously, God. Like whenever you tell me where to go, I will fucking go there. <laughs> You really wanted him to get into a, like, a couple fight with God? Just like, <laughs> God, where do you want to eat tonight? Uh, You're not okay with everything. <laughs> okay, but... You're what? not... Okay, Thai food. Well, I know I we know. just had Thai food. You said you were okay with everything. You said... <laughs> so... But anyway, so he's out there having his little couple fight with God, and suddenly a young girl shows up. Her name is Ella, and her family has the zombie plague... Remember from before when we... Nope, never <laughs> introduced this. Remember when we never introduced the zombie plague? It starts now. She goes, She goes. my family got very, very sick. And he goes, oh, gotcha. Are they, uh, are they right by... Yeah, they're right behind me. They turned into zombies. He's like, okay, go, go over to the truck. I haven't played guns since Act 1, really. Okay, are you going to murder them? Because <laughs> it sounds like you're going to murder them. I, maybe they're just sick. No, no, no. There's, I'm pretty sure there's zombies. You to said. be clear, she never says dangerous, nope. zombie, murderous, anything. She's like, my family's sick. And he's like, Quit. Get in the truck. And then six of the least happy extras like slowly wander out to get shot by Mike Norris, who might as well just yell bang. Right? He's just like, bang. And the first guy's like, <laughs> Woman comes out behind him early on her cue. Bang! Fuck, God, I'm not even down yet. Okay. <laughs> well, that's the thing is that, like, in the movie, I guess, apparently there are fucking zombies now suddenly. But if, if you replay this scene and just imagine that the first guy that came out to say, hey, get away from my daughter was Flemmy, you know? <laughs> Excuse me. And he shoots him. <laughs> right? Like, that, the scene plays out very differently. Oh, is that your dad? That, that actually happens. Was that's he, actually the goddamn scene. That, and that's the next scene. He's like, so, <laughs> murdered your dad. She's like, yep. Yep. You murdered my dad. He's like, I'm sure, like, well, I mean, not sure, but like 70 30 zombie demon, right? 70 <laughs> 30? Uh, I've been thinking about last night, and honestly, there are so many things I could have done instead of shooting your entire family. <laughs> I've been squatting pensively about my truck all morning over that. <laughs> you adopt me now. That's what right. I here. Well, and she goes, and she goes, it's all right. He was already dead on the inside. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, and I'm thinking to myself, because Mike Norris wrote this. He's like, that's the thing daughters say about their fathers all the time, right? <laughs> he right? was Catholic. Not just me. It was like, <laughs> all right. And, and she's like, no, 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 it's, it's, it's fine. He'll go to heaven, I'm sure. You did him a favor when you shot him in the head. 
I was like, yeah, guns. So and he's like, okay, it's all right. It's all right. All you got to do is follow me home. I'll ask my daughter. I'm sure she'll let me keep you. <laughs> and he's like, oh, I'll take you back to the compound. I'm sure that'll drive the plot forward. And she's like, are you sure? He's like, I'm 70, 30 on it. Like, it's like the zombie thing. <laughs> He goes, he goes, oh, by the way, you're not carrying that zombie virus that your family had, are, are you? And she's like, no, I, don't, I don't think. He's, that's good enough for me. Come on. I don't think we'll actually ever address that ever again in the entire movie. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah. Oh, and they're going to the <laughs> They'll have a moment with it. Yeah. All right. So now Wally and Joe, uh, Wally being the guy who peed on the demon, Joe being the daughter, they're going to sit around the fire pit and have a discussion about that demon that he hung out that he peed on earlier, right? So they're like, he's, he's sit, they're sitting around talking about the demon peeing when Alzheimer's dad shows up. And he's like, uh, I'm, I was going to come in and uh, throw in some exposition real quick. Uh, Satan is still coming after Mike Norris, just so everybody knows. That is still the plot of the movie. I know we threw in some zombies earlier. I thought you might be confused. thought I'd come back and, and just and, and nail that down for you, right? And Wally is watching this entire thing furious that he doesn't get to do his own exposition. It's literally, it's like, I want you to know that the voice in Wall is just like, <laughs> I'm the one who peed on him. <laughs> no, whatever. <laughs> do your weird future dementia thing, whatever. And is this where old uh, Alzheimer's guy starts speaking in tongues? Yes. And he, it's the, he clearly, they're like, yeah, you can improvise just noises, right? He's like, yeah, I got this. <laughs> okay. I got this. So he starts trying to make Noises and he runs out of possible syllables. At mm -hmm. one point, he says Giuliani very clearly. He says Giuliani. He totally I'm says. Just... He totally says Giuliani. <laughs> he starts going through the alphabet. He's like ab did stupid. Could be. He also does that great thing that people do when they're speaking in tongues and they've nailed it in the first half and then they realize they're not doing well in the second half. Where they'll be like, like their stall, it's their um. I'm doing Angel of the Centerfold. We owe those guys like $46 right now. <laughs> It's, it was worth it to find the atheist shaving a haircut trick, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, all right. Then we cut back to, to, to garage hell for this lazy ass exposition bet where Satan's like, wait, just explain to me now how the little girl with the fucking zombie parents fits into this plot. <laughs> just someone help me out here. He does not do that. No, he doesn't. But I'll tell you what he does do. <laughs> Can you show us what he does? He dances. The entire scene. Literally this. This is no exaggeration. <laughs> <laughs> the actor does that. Jordan Dragon King does that through the entire it goes goddamn for so movie. so long. Hey, do you have... Oh, you have a second one? You have a second one? Do you have a third one? Are you going to... Oh, you're doing the Macarena? I feel like you're doing the Macarena. <laughs> Cool. Are you are you controlling Hunter Wilde with the muck? Okay. He just the the character just literally does this for, for no so reason. Long. So for long. no reason through the entire goddamn scene. He is though he had made a bet where he's like, I'm totally not going to acknowledge this, and I'm going to make him say it. And if he doesn't say it, I'm going to do it through the whole fucking scene. Is exactly what happened. <laughs> What this means is that Mike Norris wakes up sweating, middle of the night, and his wife's like, honey, you okay? Did, were you having a nightmare about a black guy controlling you with Tai Chi? <laughs> <laughs> and yes, he was. Every time. <laughs> what if we made it a movie? Do you think that would make we, the yeah, nightmares better? Yeah, already made it a movie. I'm right. I wrote half the script. I'll call Jordan Dragon King. Perfect. <laughs> so. He's really good at Tai Chi. So, but Satan's like, and, and, you know, he's like, you know what, man, honestly, at least you're not playing with the fucking chains anymore. Now we can have a conversation. <laughs> he says, explain to me what, how this fucking girl factors into it. Does she, does she have the disease? Did you, did you just sneak the zombie disease in there? And he's like, no, no. What I snuck in there was suspicion. They're going to suspect that she has the disease. And Satan's like, wouldn't it be 
better though if she just had the fucking d- disease? He's like, well, now that you mention it, we should have, we should have climbed into the fucking rabbit beforehand. Yes, that would make more goddamn sense. I went but for a subtle conflict. You're only, you're only saying that now, so, fuck. And then, and then Satan turns to the goddamn movie itself, turns to the script, and says, okay, but can we just get the fuck going already, though? Whatever your plan is, can you pull the goddamn trigger already? Our dark lord has informed me we have reached 106 minutes, which is long enough to get an extra $18 from Amazon Prime. <laughs> Cut. They should have just ended the movie here, but they don't. All right, well, I'll tell you what. This movie is getting impatient with itself. So we're going to pause while it takes a couple of quick deep breaths. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell. Will we ever mention the death of Randy or see his wife again? Will we revisit the existence of the zombie virus? Will anything that happened between the opening monologue and this moment factor into the rest of the film? Find out the answers to these questions are no when we return for the but I bet my kids do secretly love me conclusion of The Crossroads of Hunter Wilde. (laughs) (sighs) Mister, mister, you gotta help me. Oh, uh, what can I do? It's my family. They're they're real sick. They've become Mm. soulless zombies, and someone needs to put their bodies to rest. I'll do it. I'll do it. It's good. Got it. Excellent. Uh, Oh, here they come. Uh, Guys, are you ready for the family picture? Sure are, honey. (laughs) Whew. Thank you so much, Mr. Wild. Yeah, no problem. So, uh, just a quick thing. Uh, Are you 100% certain they were zombies? Oh, uh, yes. Yes. Yes, for sure. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, just because, did you just say, ready for the family picture? Was that the last thing you said? Mm, No. Okay. And we're back for even more of this shit. Thank you. Thank you. I gotta go fast, but we've always got time for that. And we're gonna open back up in Crossroads or they're getting Ella cleaned up. Ella is the young girl that they met whose family was zombified. And she she's going to live with the very unwell old Alzheimer's guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not before Mike Norris's daughter takes her shot, though, right? She's like, oh, so where's she going to sleep? Like, my bed or... Yeah. <laughs> my bed or... A bed I would sneak into? <laughs> so, and then they... So she wanders off uh, to go live with Alzheimer's dad. And the daughter turns to my nurse and says, so where, where'd you find her? And he goes, well, you know, her whole family had this highly contagious disease. What? Why are you, why are you looking at me like that? Though? Normal, random girl Just... in the woods finding. A <laughs> girl said her family had trouble. disease. I murdered them. Here we are. What the fuck are you talking about? You're being weird. It's a normal and thing. So they get into this fight where the fight seems to be her saying like, hey, man. You just brought somebody who came from a disease quarantine outbreak spot or whatever into our home, and he's yelling back at her like, are you saying I can't intuit disease immunities? (laughs) Fuck you! (laughs) That's the fight, right? He actually says she has no symptoms. (laughs) Yes, of what? Yeah. (laughs) No symptoms of demon apocalypse zombie disease? (laughs) Yep, read a book. She has no symptoms of that. I asked her which lives matter. She didn't know. It was fine. She's fine. (laughs) Oh! (laughs) It's not all. All right. So, but he gets mad, and he's like, fuck you and your goddamn quarantine, and he kicks a chair and wanders off. And meanwhile... And then we cut down to Hoodie Demon, and he's doing happy capoeira now. Mm-hmm. He's celebrating that shit. He's like, nailed it. You thought, you thought, be honest, though, you thought when I brought the girl in who wasn't diseased, you didn't think that I was going to break up. They're very happy. 
family dynamic, did you? And Satan's like, no, I, I honestly, I didn't think that that was going to work. To be honest with you, it did. It seems like it's working good. They are in an argument now. <laughs> <laughs> we're it's demons only... and we're crushing it. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then he says, I didn't even understand this. Maybe you guys can explain to me. He says, I've solved the riddle of this that we're doing, of the 20 people in rural Texas. What did he solve? The riddle of how to turn Mike Norris evil. Okay. Done. Yes. <laughs> I know this one. You remarry, and then you have twins with the second wife, and you have to name your new film company Second Fiddle Productions, which is what Mike Norris's film company is actually Wait, called. Is that serious? <laughs> that's oh, how you turn Mike Norris evil. That's so sad. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. His life is so sad. <laughs> so... <laughs> I'm so happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so wait, wait, this is an amazing scene. We go back to the to Crossroads. They're testing Ella for all the diseases. We have to learn that Mike Norris is right. He he can intuit disease immunities, damn it. But they have so a doctor, too. They, who's, they, who's like, no, I, I the cheek swab for, like, demon zombie. He goes, Ebola mumps. He came back negative. We're fine. She comes back negative for all the diseases. He tests her for all the diseases, and she doesn't have any of them. Luckily, they did it quickly. <laughs> I love that so much. We just come back to the scene, and there's this doctor washing his hands up going, yep, she's negative for all of them. Doctored. <laughs> Perfect. All right, but of course, Mike Norris is off running around uh, he's still angry at his, his daughter, and he, he finds himself in a long sewer pipe. And I am definitely <laughs> not the first person to put together the sentence, Mike Norris finds himself in a long sewer pipe. <laughs> As if a dog in an obstacle course being confused to distract him. He's just like, I could run through this. He's like, man, it's a good thing ain't no chains hanging off this motherfucker. Or I'd be here all night. I'm going to install some chains in this motherfucker so I can be here all night. It's yeah. A demon trap. But here's the thing. This is the moment where the demon corrupts his soul. Yes. Right? And the tactic that the demon will use is nobody gets you. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Nobody appreciates that you're as awesome as your dad. Right? <laughs> Which means Mike Norris was sitting at whatever anti-gay typewriter he used to make this movie <laughs> with his balls all hooked up to electrodes or whatever he is he did. And he was like, now be honest, Mike, what's your greatest weakness? How would the devil reach you? Nobody gets how fucking cool you are. <laughs> oh, the enemy is clever, but I am protected. Well, you almost done down there, Jordan. Uh, <laughs> well, I love Jordan Dragon King's performance here, too, because he's trying to do the demon thing, and he's going like, and no one understands the sacrifices you've made for them. They stand before you, and they go, I shit you not, this is, this, is, this is the choice Jordan Dragon King made. He goes, they stand before you, and they go, e -e 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 -e. <laughs> That's them. That's what they sound like. <laughs> he does that in the demon voice. I was like, I was like this, is, this is why you get peed on, man. This, right here. And then so he doubles down on this because the daughter now appears, right? Yes. And she's like, oh, God. get out of here, demon. You are a liar. To which he replies, exact quote, <laughs> I am a liar, but you're ugly. Wait, wait, wait. No. You're ugly and, and stupid. <laughs> wait, and there's one more. There's one more. Dumb. Dumb. And, uh, <laughs> he goes, he goes, I may be a liar and a deceiver, but you are an ugly, stupid face. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, that is my line <laughs> as a demon. He goes, you are movie. ugly and stupid and dumb. Shall I go on? And I'm like, yeah, please go please. on. Please. <laughs> what other insults does Jordan Dragon King know? <laughs> you oh, are a foosball Jesus. table. Shit. 
<laughs> Ran out of real ones. <laughs> I changed my name legally to Dragon King. <laughs> he did. <laughs> so, all right. So, yeah, so she shows up with all her dumb, stupid fatness or whatever it was he called her. And, uh, and she goes like, in the name of Jesus, fuck off or whatever. And, and he doesn't fuck off. It never works in the movies. In never. every Christian movie with a demon, they go, in the name of Christ, I compel you to move along. And then they always go like, no, that doesn't count. And I'm like, fuck, man. Really? In I said, movies. in the name of Jesus. <laughs> Do you guys think when that happens in Christian movies, like Jesus tattles to his dad, like he knocks on his study? <laughs> Your demons aren't going in my name again. <laughs> <laughs> Either making me look like a fucking idiot. <laughs> my hands hurt for like six hours, Dad. <laughs> Plus, I'm you. And a ghost. So <laughs> that religion's so stupid. <laughs> I forgot he's a ghost, too. Oh, it gets me that he's a ghost. <laughs> All right. So, wait, wait. Then there's this amazing moment where Mike Norris, he's, he's starting to be tempted by the devil. But then he fights back. He goes to dive at Dragon King, Jordan Dragon King. And, and Jordan Dragon King pulls the old disappear right as you try to tackle me and then you fall into hell unconsciously trick. Yep, which happens to Mike Norris a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and that is what it would look like. We get to watch it. I enjoyed it a lot. He just thought nothing. It's great. So, so he wakes up in hell. Yeah, if I had a nickel for every time Mike Norris tackled a black guy and woke up in a cell. <laughs> Screaming about demons. <laughs> you could pay Mike Norris's bail. I could. Yeah. All right, but yeah. So he wakes up in the in the cell, and you're like, "Oh wow! Did did uh, Dra Jordan Dragon King win?" And Satan's like, "Wait, it's not over yet because there are like totally thirteen minutes left in this flick." And I mean, what max four of those could be credits? So yeah, there's still got to be another <laughs> step in the plan, I guess. So they've, they, I guess they've drug him down to hell, but now they got, have to get to him to accept Satan as his Lord and Savior. I don't really know how it works here, but at this point, they still have to do some other level of corruption with him, right? <laughs> and they give him like a multi-level marketing pitch. <laughs> <laughs> they totally do, yeah. Like you can have as many as four demons working right below <laughs> you, and then they find demons. And, and by the way, the whole, this, this whole time, now, keep in mind, Mike Norris wrote and directed this film. The whole time, Jordan Dragon King, who is a very attractive black man, is caressing his head and his face. So, so at some point, no Norris is like, and then you caress me? What? What? I was... You guys were going to... Jordan, were that too, you're going right? to need to talk way closer to the nape of my neck. <laughs> <laughs> yep, another 54 takes and we'll be good. Did you ever listen to that CD I sent you around the holidays? <laughs> No reason. Action! <laughs> Ain't no second fiddle here. So, yeah, so they're still trying to... So they're still trying to do the corruption. They're still trying to corrupt his mind by telling him that his daughter doesn't really think he's as cool as she lets on or probably should think he is, given how much he's accomplished in his life. I mean, you know, maybe Dad made more movies, but I'm making a movie, too, right now. But... But then they, when, when Satan starts talking shit about his daughter, that's when he starts fighting back, right? Mm -hmm. That's when he's like, he's like, no, that's not true. So it, I guess now they have to, con if I'm not mistaken, this is where we're at in the movie. They have to convince him his daughter hates him so that they can win the he is in hell now. Right? That is the plot. Okay, all right. No, I was yep. going to say, those words don't actually add up to an English it paralyzed my brain. They don't say okay. sure, yeah. It, all that's right. the movie. So, but, but while this is all happening, this is all happening in, in hell with his soul, but his body is still back on earth. So in Crossroad, in the little town, they all find his, his limp dead body, and they're like, what do y'all want to do? And they're like, I, I, you said fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> you said that. And so they all, they realize the only thing they can do is pray for him. If they all pray for him hard enough, they'll 
have an involvement in the third act too. Now, I have a crazy billionaire rewrite of the movie at this point because they're like, we need to pray. Jesus is the only one that can save us. So here's what I picture in my head. They're praying over his body and he's in hell. And then a light shines down and the light fades and standing there is Jesus Christ played by none other than Chuck Norris. <laughs> who fucking roundhouse kicks these demons in the face and then he carries him like the end of Sailor and a Gentleman or whatever fucking movie that is. Puts a sailor hat on his dad and they just fuck. So, where the eagles fly. And of course, this is, this is also the moment where we have to like resolve the pastor Paul who didn't think that God was real or the rapture moment or whatever. Because like they're they're all praying over his body and, and Alzheimer's dad's like everyone needs to pray like they've never prayed before and Pastor Paul's like but I don't know if I even believe anymore and Alzheimer's dad turns to him and is like shut the fuck up man He's the best. I'm sick of your negativity and your bullshit <laughs> you're the pastor start acting like it actually the line was your faith is strong enough I thought I'd spice it up a little in my rewrite there. <laughs> Uh, but meanwhile, uh, back in hell, Mike Norris still won't submit his spirit to Satan and Hoodie Demon. And they're like, they're like, man, we tried talking shit about his daughter. That's it. That's the only thing we tried. tried. I mean, why don't they torture him? Like, the guys behind him, the other two guys in the cages, they're going like, no, not that. Do whatever you're doing to them for a minute. I don't know. Passive aggression when... Lasts long enough to really get to you. <laughs> Just picture that those guys have been down there for a thousand years with them being like, your daughter hates you. Fine! Ah! <laughs> Please, pull out my toenails. <laughs> Jesus. So, oh, there's this great moment too. Now, this is the part where he has to pull the chain apart with the might of his faith. <laughs> we watch Mike Norris pull apart the metal. Well, no. We watch Mike Norris strain at a cuff. We watch a chain being pulled apart. We watch Mike Norris strain at a cuff. There's a pair of britches filled with shit from them trying to get those two shots together. You can buy it on Etsy. Not anymore, you can't, but you could. You could buy it on Now I got shot on and peed on it. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I'm a demon. I need to be promoted. So, okay. So he breaks out of his chain, and Satan, by the way, is just like standing behind him going, I told you this whole fucking plan was stupid, man. <laughs> That's the whole time. That's been my whole thing. So the devil's like, oh, come on. He got out. You said you would walk and feed him, Dagon. This is ridiculous. <laughs> so <laughs> come on, man. So they break out of that dimension or whatever. Now they're out of hell, and it's time for the two of them to have a fight. Dagon, Jordan Dragon King's weapon, will be a sword, of course. Versus uh, his Mike greatest Norris. weakness, a chain. A chain. <laughs> a chain. <laughs> and by the way, if you want to know the best part of this movie, it is when he pulls the sword and Mike Norris wraps his hand around the chain and they both realize... There's no realistic universe <laughs> where Jordan Dragon King doesn't beat the shit <laughs> out of Mike Norris. It's fun. You get the panic in their eyes as they try to think of a way that Jordan Dragon King could touch Mike Norris without him instantly turning to dust. Keeps me young for the next 15 years. <laughs> he goes, at one point while they're fighting... <laughs> Mike Norris turns to him, he says, I don't fear you, which sounds so unrealistic. Mike Norris saying that to a black man. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I was not buying that for a second. But can we talk about the final move of the fight? The, uh, the wrestling the move? The Stone Cold Stunner? That so, oh, Jesus Christ. Well, Wait. here's the thing. The, <laughs> they, they, like, the, the saddest non-Stone Cold Stunner, so I should describe he, it. Jar Jordan very nicely like bends down and is like, okay, Mike, you've got me in a Stone Cold Stunner. But then Mike went over to YouTube and he was like, you fucking sit. I can't sit I'm down. Gonna, Why would I sit? That would hurt me. I would go all the way. So instead, the two actors stand there, shoulder to shoulder, cuddling. And the Foley guy goes, crack. <laughs> and that's the end of the fight. His neck broke out of boredom. 
just like Jeffrey Epstein's. It all comes full circle. <laughs> And yeah, and now the demon from hell is dead because Mike Norris curb stomped him or whatever the fuck it was. And then we cut to like, we, 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 we come full circle because he read about that in the How to Make a Screenplay pamphlet as well. And so he goes, at the end, he's like, it's now been six more months. I'm back in that little tree house I was at in the beginning, remember? From the beginning, the tree house, yep, still doing my thing with the tree house. I wanted, I wanted a zombie to just come over and eat him. And then the end. <laughs> Best movie. Oh, fuck, there were zombies. I forgot about... Side yeah. tackled by an Orthodox Jew. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so... And, and then the movie's over. That's it. That's what well, we get. Uh, we get. Uh, what was it? Uh, fucking First Corinthians fifteen fifty seven. Oh, I'm sorry. One Corinthians fifteen fifty seven. I believe it's I Corinthians. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. We, and by the way, that quote is, but thanks to God, he gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. I love that their Bible quote started with, but <laughs> like, to end their movie, it was like, yeah, all that being said by Mike Norris. Nevertheless, he gets, <laughs> he gets confused. As not, eh, that all notwithstanding Jesus something. So, okay, so here's my question, though, because we had zombies, we had uh, liberals, we had Jews, we had Muslims, we had the, 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 the demons and, and Satan and all of that stuff. What? what People of color. <laughs> what was the other apocalypse this movie, like, what one apocalypse was this movie missing? Zip lining. <laughs> Is zip lining not fun? I've never done it. I feel like it, it I'm not like, having this fight like, on stage. Like it would be fun. And on that note, we're going to hop out of the live show for a quick second so Eli can tell us what's on deck. Goop Labs, are you into it? <laughs> oh, lucky us. I had to miss the first scoop. I'm very excited about this one. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 236 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Morgan for helping out with the live show. A huge thanks to Anna. A huge thanks to Lucinda for helping out with merch. Huge thanks to everybody at the Hudson Theater and everybody who came out to see us in L.A. And a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreons that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Idiot, Citation Needed, and The Skeptic Ride, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robinson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slotnick of Village Raps on Mars. All other music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright, Eli Bosick, I'm no Lucius, promising to work harder on another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club clothes. The demon Dagon went on to ensure that a certain school teacher in Peoria got way too much salt on her eggs. <laughs> Mike Norris is still allowed to carry a gun. Jesus. Yeah. Texas went on to become majority Latino, and the Republican Party died out in panicky fear like the dodo bird. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.